Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. So yesterday, uh, the final decision in the bail hearing uh, was made. So the final decision was made and uh, Unastasia Janssen was the only one that was granted bail. The others did not uh, get uh, bail. So they have to stay uh on the inside while uh probably the trial is uh, taking place okay so Criselda lewis uh was the one that actually got to speak to nastasia and uh get to hear from her uh how she's feeling but also what happened uh that night it was actually an interesting interview to listen to of course she starts by saying how happy she is that she is uh going to be home and she says that she thanks the correctional services because she was treated well on the inside and uh i do kind of feel like you know that gives us an indication on on how life is probably for dr nandipa and uh, Tabo Besta, they're probably comfortable too, wherever they are. And um, she says that uh, she feels that she has done everything that she can to, to assist with the investigations. Every time that they called her, every time that they wanted to speak to her, every time they wanted her to write a statement, she did uh, just that. She does say that she was very, very surprised uh, when she was arrested because uh, because of the relationship that she has, she had established uh, with the investigators and the police at the time, she felt, uh, she thought that maybe they would let her know if she was getting uh, arrested, but uh, they did not tell her. They came and picked her up from home as if maybe she was going to give a statement or something, and then the next thing she was uh, being uh, arrested. Maybe uh, uh, they were scared that she might try to, to run, okay? So when she talks about that guy, she says that, you know, she uh, knocked on uh, at work around uh, 7.30 and uh, the shift was supposed to be 7.30 and the evening to 7.30 in the morning, it was a night shift. She says it was a, it was not really that busy. She says usually the nights at work would not be as busy as the daytime. During the day, there's a lot that is happening in the prison, but at night, there isn't as much uh, happening, okay? It sounds like the people uh, that she was working with that night, like um, uh, it's the people that she normally worked with, even Mr. Matsuara, she says it's, a, it's somebody that is uh, full of jokes. Uh, they would work together uh and uh even drink uh tea together and have uh their lunch boxes together so uh nothing was different uh that night okay she does say that at at uh some point in the early hours the next morning uh smoke was uh, reported in the prison but she says that there is a rule that you do not open the prison uh, doors without uh, having the supervisor there. So uh, they reported, they called the supervisor when they had uh, the reports that there was smoke, okay? And then uh, after a while, they also themselves saw smoke coming out of cell uh, 35, okay? This is when uh, Madwara asked them to open cell number 35. Even here, she does insist that the normal procedure was uh, that they do not open any of the cells without the supervisor being there. But in her interview, I'm not clear if the supervisor did come, okay? Or if Matsuara was a supervisor, because at some point Matsuara does ask them uh, to open cell uh, 35 okay and i'm not clear at what point is cell number 35 opened because she talks about being instructed to open cell number 35 and she talks about how it was uh, against the rule to open uh, cells without the supervisor there but 
she does not indicate if the supervisor came or maybe I missed it, but I listened to it a number of times. She does not indicate if the supervisor did come. Uh, she only mentions getting the instruction from Matuara to, to, to open the gates and she also doesn't say eventually if she opened uh, cell number 35 but cell number 35 we all know that it was eventually opened because at some point uh, Tabo Pesta did get out of uh, that cell okay she says uh, after that she never saw anybody walking out of uh, the cell, nothing was suspicious. He did not think that there was anything uh, that had happened, that anybody had escaped from prison. She says only the next morning when they were, um, later on that morning when they were going home and uh, they used uh, certain transport from work and everybody was, you know, in the car. They were talking about uh, somebody having, uh, having died in the in the prison cell so she says only at that time she, did she become aware that there was somebody that had possibly died uh from the fire she says that it's uh, remember you guys this happened in may so in august you know that is when uh they learned of a possible escape that is when uh, she was told that the DNA uh, results uh, from the body that was in the cell did not match that of uh, Tabo Pesta's mother, that they uh, came to realize that this was a possible escape, okay? And she does say that she believes that she is being uh, framed and uh, especially by the people that, you know, uh, she worked with because a lot of the people, everybody that worked with her know, knew and uh, they know now that she is somebody that when she works, she likes to do things by the book. So there is no way that she could have broken uh, certain rules and they know that, okay? So she does feel like she's being... Um, uh, framed and uh, she said that uh, she is being asked about her dismissal because I believe she was dismissed around uh, December and uh, Chriselda did ask her what was she dismissed for she says that she was dismissed uh, the uh, uh, the allegations were that she had given the false statement okay and uh, she says that what had happened was that when they were uh, the investigation was taking place on what happened that day. This is the investigation by the employer. Uh, she had given a statement, but then uh, she says months later, the uh, investigator came to uh, get her to sign the statement, but the investigator had changed the statement and put his own words on the statement. And basically she was uh, asked to sign that statement, which was not 100% her words. And then she was charged with uh, giving a false statement. She says that uh, in, in the company, she does feel uh, like she was being made to take the fall because she says even one director uh, in the company did call her that is the G4S director did call her and threaten her and the director had said that you are going to give us what we need or else and, you know she does say that they have an, uh, an ongoing case uh, her uh, with a G4S because of course this was an unfair uh, dismissal but yes, definitely she feels uh, that the company needed somebody to take the fall and they felt like uh, it should be uh, her, okay? Oh yes, another thing that she says they, they had touched her for at G4S, uh, basically she was dismissed also because she did not do the spot checks, okay? She says that surprised her, in fact, because ever since she had worked for the company, she had worked for the company for 10 years, that was something that was not done at all by the company. So they never did any spot checks. So for her to be fired because she did not uh, do spot checks, uh, it surprised her, okay? And then uh, she's, uh, Christelda does ask her, if she does feel at all that something happened to her that night that maybe she was drugged because she talks about earlier on in the night that they were eating and 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 uh drinking uh together uh during their shift and uh so chris asked her did anything happen 
uh, to you that night? Do you feel like maybe uh, the coffee that you drank that night uh, was spiked or something like that? And she feels like it's a possibility, but she wishes that the whole thing uh, of the escape and all of that she had known earlier because then all of those things uh, she would have uh, thought about earlier and if somebody had brought up the possibility that she had been drugged then she would have gone for tests to find out if anything was in her blood but she does not know she just knows that they did drink coffee together that day she has tried to talk to one of uh, the G4S employees that is also in uh, uh, also the accused that she was with in uh, in the room where they were working to say what happened because obviously she is saying she does not know anything about the escape and she's the only one that did not get the money the other um, uh, ex-employee did get uh, 14,000 rand so she said at some point she did try to speak to him to say listen tell me what's happening here and uh the reply was that from the from uh the ex-employee was listen we cannot talk about this okay so she that's when she realized that actually they knew what was happening but she did not know what was happening so she decided that okay fine if you don't want to talk to me now then i never want to talk to you ever again so i guess as they are sitting there even though they are ex-employees and all of that but they haven't uh at least she hasn't uh discussed what uh happened okay she hasn't discussed uh they haven't put their stories together if i may say so to say okay what happened you remember that day what happened uh what are you good did you know of the escape or not she just knows her side of uh, the story okay she does get emotional you guys when she's talking about uh, her children uh, being the ones that are affected as well as as a family uh, affected by this whole thing uh, but yeah she's happy to be uh, going home okay and here's the thing you guys i do have a feeling that honestly she might be telling truth on nostalgia but it's just that in this case you really never know because when it came to uh dr nandipa's uh, father and in the beginning it was like it seemed like he had taken or participated uh, on a minimum basis like he had I uh, just gone to um he had just written a letter i think to say that yes uh Tabo Besa had paid lobola for nandipa dr nandipa but then later on we found out that it was more than that he had done more than that at some point he was driving the car that was going to pick up the bodies from the morgue so i kind of felt like after he got bail i felt like should he have got bail you know uh because obviously his participation was more than we thought and uh so even with unastasha it's taking me time to get to a place where i feel like okay fine she's innocent because i kind of feel like maybe there's more that we're still going to find out you know on this case but if we just take what she is saying you know uh, it sounds like she might be getting framed but we don't know you guys we don't know because pesta pesta <laughs> pesta chose uh people that he worked with very very carefully and it's almost like he chose people that were just as sick in the head as he was so you will never know about these people so yeah at least the kids are going to have their mother back even though katlako's mother is never ever going to have her son back anyway you guys thank you so much for watching this video please like it before pumag you wanna share it with your friends with your family and even with strangers and sanda kakun